Hello everyone, this is Shio Sairuti. Welcome to my channel on Science, Technology, Environment and Climate Change. Today, we will be discussing on some of the important trees that are relevant for the UPSC prelims examination. So, broadly speaking, this topic comes under ecology and environment, biodiversity and in biodiversity about the important trees. This topic is very important because this is a very niche topic and uh, uh, if you see the previous year questions, uh, the trend for the past 2-3 years, every year one or two questions are being asked on this topic. For example, let's say in the year 2024, uh, we had a question on a unique property of a tree and then uh, in the same year they asked us, uh, they gave us uh, some trees and they ask us uh, which are native to India. Uh, similarly, in the year 2023, they have mentioned the name of some trees and along with their scientific names and they ask us uh, which of them are deciduous trees. Similarly, uh, in the year 2021, if I'm correct, they have asked us uh, about uh, whether the tree is evergreen or deciduous, whether it is uh, endemic and its uh, applications, uses or special characteristics. So, uh, seeing moving with the trend, uh, what I can say is that uh, they are asking nativity, whether the tree is uh, native, endemic or exotic, whether the tree is evergreen or deciduous, uh, the technical name of the tree and its special characteristics uh, such as, uh, for example, like this question and also its geographical distribution. So uh, in today's class, based on these PYQs, I have made a table on these aspects for 15 important tree species uh, in our country and after discussing about these trees then I will uh, discuss some important concepts associated with the trees and forestry. So starting with the trees, uh, we'll start with uh, native species first, uh, starting with banyan tree. So its scientific name is Ficus bengalensis. It is native to India, it is an evergreen species and uh, its geographical range in India is mostly confined to uh, humid, actually uh, it is not confined but uh, it is geographically spread uh, throughout India from Punjab to Kerala and it is often planted uh, in villages and temple grounds. One of its special or unique feature is that banyan tree usually have this aerial prop roots. You must have seen uh, this uh, feature. So basically these prop roots also known as the pillar roots or buttress roots they help in providing additional support to the tree's massive structures. So that is all about the banyan tree. Uh, going to, to the neem tree. So its scientific name is Azadi Rachta, Azadi Rachta indica. It is native species, evergreen species. And it is usually found in drier tropics of Rajasthan and Gujarat along with Deccan Plateau and indo ganesic Plain. So coming to the special features, uh, it is a very good nitrogen fixer. We'll discuss uh, about nitrogen fixers in the coming part of the section. And after that, it is a multi-purpose tree. So this, uh, we obtain a chemical called Azadi, Azadi Rachtin, which is used as an uh, insecticide. Also, the twigs are also used as brushes, etc. Also, neem tree is a very good drought-resistant tree. Then, Going to mango, its technical name Mangifera indica. It is a native species, evergreen species. It is almost cultivated in every state, and uh, there is a there is its wild variety that is present in Western Ghats and Northeastern Hills. So mango, uh, on the one side we have a horticultural uh, crop which is being grown in plantations. At the same time, it, ha it also has a wild variety that, that, that grows in forest of Western Ghats and uh, Northeastern Hills. Then going with Dalbergia siso or Indian rosewood. It is a native deciduous species. Let's change color. Uh, it is found in riverine plains of Punjab uh, to Bihar and it is mostly planted across canals and roads into Rajasthan and UP. So uh, it is mostly confined to northern uh, plains of uh, northern part of our country and uh, it's, up, uh, it uses the rosewood uh, that is obtained from the tree as used for furniture and making guitars. And then uh, let's go for uh, Teak, that is Tecrona grandis. It is a native deciduous uh, tree. 
that is usually found in moist or and dry deciduous forest of Kerala, Karnataka, Madhya Pradesh, Odisha, and so it is mostly confined uh, to the peninsular part of the country, and it is also grown uh, as a plantations uh, across central India uh, for the commercial purpose. The tea could has multiple uses. And then coming to sal tree, uh, it is called as Shoya robusta. It is a native species. and it is mostly a deciduous tree uh, that is confined to the northern part of our country that is himalayan foothills from uttarakhand to assam and also some parts of central india uh, its leaves are mostly used uh, into uh, made into disposable plates that we see patal so the tree is an uh, species very important non timber forest product that is a source of livelihood for the tribes and then mahua mahua uh, is very important because uh, it was asked in uh, Twice actually. Here we have seen mahua, and here there is mahua. Uh, so its technical name is uh, Madhuka indica, and also there are there is one more species called uh, Madhuka longifolia. So it is mostly a semi evergreen uh, tree, and its special or uh, its uses include uh, it. You know, a liquor is made from its flowers. Uh, it, it even this is a very important non timber forest produce. So just remember about this, and its distribution is uh, central and. Uh, Eastern dry deciduous belts of Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Jharkhand, uh, Odisha, and Maharashtra. And then coming to sandalwood. Sandalwood is Santalum album. It is a native tree to southern peninsular India mostly. It is confined to the southern part of the country. It is an evergreen tree, and uh, these are its uh, distribution. And uh, here the special feature uh, which I am talk about, which I am going to talk about, is very important. this uh, santalum album or the sandalwood is a partial root parasite so what it means is that it obtains nutrients from other plants through its modified roots called historia so what happens is that here we have uh, the santalum album tree and let's say we have one more tree here with its roots so what uh, this sandalwood tree has a special roots uh, that can tap into the roots of other trees and can obtain water and nutrients from it so uh, this is uh, because of this special uh, unique thing i think uh, this tree is going to be important for us so please uh, remember this uh, feature of sandalwood tree because uh, you can expect a question uh, on these lines uh, like for example they have asked for this special feature of fig tree and then uh, continuing with the other three species we have red sandalwood which uh, whose name is terocarpus centralis it is endemic it means that it is not only native but it is only found in that particular area that is southern part of the eastern ghats so it is a deciduous tree found in other scrub hill tracts of andhra pradesh that is uh, chitur tirupati kadapa districts i think uh, you might have seen this in the movie pushpa and uh, regarding its special uh, features it is site listed just uh, try to find out under sites it is cat- it is categorized into which category and then yeah it draws intense smuggling pressure uh, as we have seen in the movie and then going to eucalyptus eucalyptus uh, so eucalyptus is a tree that is predominantly seen in india but uh, unlike the pro- popular notion it is not a native species to india it is an exotic species that was introduced during the british period uh, for its commercial purposes so it is an evergreen tree that is mostly confined across the plains of punjab haryana maharashtra karnataka and tamil nadu uh, In the and also uh, mostly in the Himalayan and Nilgiris region. Uh, what are its features? Uh, it is a very ultra fast growing. Uh, it has a uh, 15 years of rotation period. Uh, rotation is a technical term that is uh, used in silvic culture. But for our for our understanding, just remember that rotation is nothing but it is the total time between the time we plant a sapling and the time we harvest a tree. So within 15 years of uh, cultivating uh, eucalyptus plantation. We will be able to reap its benefits, you know, from its wood. And there is also an issue of uh, heavy uh, what groundwater drawdown from this tree. So remember, any exotic tree that has been introduced in India with a commercial purpose will also have its ecological impact. You know, like for example, eucalyptus. It's due to which there is a groundwater depletion. And then coming to bamboo tree. it is a uh, mostly native with a few exotic ornamentals bamboo is a uh, technical name along with many other uh, things it is a perennial uh, grass or as you can say uh, yeah, it is a grass and uh, yeah its geographical location it is uh, 
predominantly found in the northeastern india and andaman and it is also abundant in uh, most of the western uh, uh, western ghats central thai forest and most of the areas so uh, mostly they are distributed throughout the uh, country along with its concentration in northeastern part of the country that is why we have this national bamboo mission uh, with a special focus in the northeastern uh, parts of our country and it is a very fastest uh, growing land plants and yeah its wood is used for uh, pulp uh, and also its younger shoots are eaten as a vegetable in certain parts of our country and uh, also one of the uh, important or unique features of bamboo is its uh, unique flowering behavior so uh, try to uh, learn more about this on internet coming to acacia species or the battles so we have a mix of acacia species uh, some are native like acacia neotica and there are some uh, exotic such as acacia auriculiformis uh, this is uh, native to latin america basically so it was brought to, as an exotic to our country so it is mostly a deciduous tree and regarding its distribution it is mostly found in arid and semi arid plains ravines reclaimed remains and other drier conditions or difficult conditions because one of the important properties of this species is that it is a tougher species that is it is drought resistant it is able to adjust to harsher conditions and it is also a good nitrogen fixer so uh, if we want to reclaim uh, an abundant land if you wanted to uh, prevent desertification we can use this species i don't as a green wall i think presently uh, in the aravallis this aravalli green wall uh, these species are being used along with some other species and uh, yeah so this group of trees can act as a shelter belt against sand drift or sand dune or uh, sand storms coming to pines pinus oxbergi is a, a very common species uh, that is found so till now the trees which we have mostly discussed are not coniferous but this is a coniferous tree so the difference is that this is a regular tree whereas in case of conifers uh, we have this uh, as its foliage structure and uh, it is a native to himalayas and northern hills these are evergreen conifer and uh, yeah its distribution is confined to western and eastern himalayas so uh, with uh, this uh, elevation range and uh, it has long resin needles uh, from which turpentine and uh, rosin is extracted coming to the last species that is rhizophora so rhizophora is a mangrove species that is uh, present in the sundarbans mahanadi godavari deltas andaman and nicobar islands gulf of kutch it is a native evergreen species uh, its unique properties include it has a distinct rock or silt root buttresses uh, to stabilize the soil its location in soft muds uh the it is a, it has a vivi para seeds which means that uh it's it germinates on the plant itself and then fa- fall down as propagules and yeah uh, also the tree is resistant to harsher salt conditions Uh, finally uh, this is an indicative map of distribution of tree species across our country so in peninsular part of the country we can see uh, the predominance of tectona grandis the chandan tree and we also have other evergreen and deciduous species such as ebony mahogany etc and uh, coming to the plains you know indo gangetic plains we have predominance of eucalyptus we have sal tree we have dalragia sisso Tam, uh, tamarind tree etc coming to uh, the himalayan region we have uh, devadar tree we have pine species we have silver fig etc and uh, coming to the cold desert we have salix alba poplar tree and uh, salix alba is uh, kashmiri willow from which the cricket bats are made and then in arid region we have uh, semi arid region we have acacia prosopis neem tree as we have discussed and albizia species so these are uh, and uh, coming to the sundarbans and all the mangrove region we have rhizophora avicennia etc so with this uh, we have come to an end to the first part 
uh, i will discuss uh, the next concepts in the part 2 of this section thank you